Hi, I'm Greg Levine, and this is the party line for December 2nd, 2011, and I've got this Gang of Four song running in my head right now. It's, uh, it is not enough. Oh, I'm not going to sing it. That's, no, I'm not going to do that to you. It is not enough. It is just a habit. Nostalgia, it's no good. Our future is in the past. Uh, guess what I'm thinking about while I'm singing this song? I'm thinking about the nuclear industry. It's been a couple of weeks since I've given you a great big nuclear update. I got a lot to talk about today. The first thing that got me singing this song, um, well actually there's a lot of things, but the first thing I'm going to talk about is uh, there was news this week that uh, the Toshiba Corporation, which you know owns Westinghouse, uh, is gearing up to ship turbines to uh, two plants in uh, South Carolina and Georgia for uh, construction of uh, these AP-1000 reactors. Um, they're gearing up to ship turbines to build AP-1000 reactors that have not actually yet been approved by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Yet, Toshiba and Westinghouse are so confident, apparently, that they will be approved that they've already set the wheels in motion and there are articles in Japanese business papers um, talking about how excited they are to be manufacturing these new reactors for the United States, a, a country that hasn't built a new reactor in over 30 years but basically seems poised to build a whole lot of them. And at least four right now ready to go in in, uh, in uh, South Carolina and Georgia. Uh, of course this is uh, in a year, uh, a year that uh, a recent uh, post on AOL Energy, I know, who, who knew that AOL had an energy page, but they do, they called it Nuclear's Anus Horribilis. Um, a horrible year. Uh, I believe uh, the, the most famous reference of that term is uh, Queen Elizabeth uh, some years back when many, many bad things happened to the royal family. And, and the Addis Aribilis, uh detailed by AOL, uh, says, you know, a lot of bad things happened in the nuclear world this year. There, of course, was the Fukushima disaster, which continues. There, is, uh, there was uh, the earthquake that uh, disabled North Anna. Uh, they, they mention a couple of other um, problems. Oh, the floods. Uh, Cal um, God, where were the floods again? Um, Omaha, was that right? Uh, Calhoun, yeah. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, uh, th they mention a few. They frankly don't mention about half of the problems that uh, I've detailed in, in several of these uh, editions over the course of the year. But, but what's really most interesting about it is that even though they call it a horrible year, they treat it, I think, maybe sort of like Queen Elizabeth did, as something that is um, pretty much in the past. That, yeah, well, you know, this was a horrible year, but this year is almost over, and somehow magically when we flip the calendar over, everything is going to be uh, back to square, right? You know, um, the future is bright. Uh, I don't get that. I don't get that because, of course, Fukushima is nowhere near over. It is continually metastasizing, and because none of these events that we've had, be it the... Uh, the quakes that, that triggered the shutdown in North Anna, or uh, the floods, or, or the things not mentioned in the article, like uh, the uh, the fire that just happened a couple of weeks ago at Davis Bessie, like you know the umpteenth problem they've had at Davis Bessie, or uh, another problem uh, with uh, concrete at uh, Seabrook. Uh, that was recently uh, divulged, or problems we've seen in California, or Vermont, or uh, in Michigan with the uh, the venting of radioactive gas. Uh, you know, all of these problems aren't specific to 2011. That they are specific to the nuclear power generating industry, but they are not specific to any time frame. And very little of what we've seen happen uh, in the course of 2011 tells me that the situation is going to be any different. If anything, things seem to be accelerating. Either that or we're just paying a whole lot more attention than we used to, thanks probably to the disaster in Japan. Uh, but, uh, I mean, literally, you know, I sit down to write these posts and, and I start Googling some of the terms that I expect, you know, like I wanted to find out what was happening with North Anna this week. And, uh, you know, North Anna got the restart okay. I reported a couple of Fridays back, three Fridays ago, I think, uh, at the very end of the day. And uh, they expected to have it up and going in about a week. It actually wound up taking three weeks because, lo and behold, 
as they were restarting it, they found problems that they didn't discover on the sort of walk down, as they call it, when they were looking over the plant. Um, I'm glad that they restarted things slowly. I'm glad that they paused to take stock and fix these things. I'm glad it's a step-by-step -step process, but it just goes to show that despite what everyone says, all oh, no major damage, there was enough damage at North Anna that was not spotted in the walk-downs that it had to be repaired before they could actually bring the plant up to full speed. I, I think that's noteworthy. Uh, there was a, a, a brand new facility, I mean, uh, so I'm reading these, I guess I was saying, and I'm looking at this, and one click leads to another click, and I'm shaking my head. I'm like, either sitting at home, or I'm sitting like at a coffee place somewhere, working on this, and people must be looking at me like I'm crazy, because I'm like, I can't believe it, because you follow one lead to another, and it's like, hey, I learned about a whole new facility this week, and that's Crystal River uh, in Florida. Crystal River plant turns out to have a, a long and sordid history. It, the, the containment building cracked when they were building it back in the mid-70s. Uh, it developed really big cracks in 2009. Uh, why? Because they had to replace the uh, steam turbines inside and uh, the operators, um, which uh, Progress Energy, uh, decided that rather than hire contractors like all 34 other nuclear facilities that had done this in the past, they were going to do this themselves, so they drilled a hole in the containment builder, cut a hole, or something, it's a big hole, and they're like 40-something inch thick concrete walls, and it caused a crack. And in attempts to repair that crack, they caused another crack. And then it turns out that just this summer, a third crack, and we're not talking like, you know, hairline, we're talking 25 foot long, three feet four foot wide kind of cracks. We're talking chunks of concrete on the floor kind of cracks. The, the containment building, every time they try to fix one crack, ever since they screwed it up, they, they basically cause another crack. And even more disturbing, of course, was that even though they were being monitored for repair of the first crack, they didn't bother to report to the Nuclear Regulatory Commission that this third crack had developed. And it, it didn't turn up until uh, the St. Petersburg Times asked a question about it last week. Uh, funny enough, they did feel compelled to report to the uh, Security and Exchange Commission that, that they were having problems with cracking. But anyway, the, the crazy thing here is, you know, you've got this, this building that frankly needs to be torn down and rebuilt if you ever want to operate the, the uh, Crystal River facility again. But they're not going to do that. They want to come up, they're coming up with a plan to replace the panels of the wall one by one. There are six panels, leaving the rest of it intact and around it. And even though this is just as expensive as building the other building, they want to do this because they think they can get it done in a faster amount of time. And the fact is that every year the Crystal River is offline, and it's now been offline since early 2009, it's costing $300 million because Progress Energy has to buy power from, from other sources to provide the guaranteed amount that they have in, in the, uh, you know, the utilities contract that they have with the state. So, so they, they're looking to save money, even though most people agree that they're just asking for another crack every time they do something like this. Um, that's okay, though, because the risks aren't going to be really incurred by uh, Progress Energy. Uh, you see, Florida, a state that already is paying a surcharge on its electric bills for future nuclear power plants that may never be built, Florida just approved this week, or last week, might have been this week, um, a surcharge to also cover some of the costs that are being incurred by Progress Energy as they continue to screw up the repair at Crystal River. Uh, initially, I think $140 million. Uh, eventually, $670 million, they say, is what they want, which is kind of funny because that's exactly how much this has cost them up until right now in terms of having the plants offline. But it's only a quarter of what we expect the plant to incur in expenses. And this is just replacement energy expenses, not repair expenses. By the time they finally fix this problem, their quickie way, by the way, in 2014. Uh, so, phenomenal, phenomenal costs of this, you know, once thought incredibly cheap and economical uh, nuclear energy thing here. I, I, uh, every time I hear about cheap nuclear energy, I mean, the top of my head wants to explode, or at least I want to, you know, burst into a, a song, and if not, um, 
if not Gang of Four, then, you know, perhaps, uh, I don't know, um, what am I thinking of, uh, the birds, you know, um, where have all the flowers gone, when will they ever learn, when will they ever learn, I mean, when, not in 2011, not really betting on 2012 either, uh, and there's a lot more in the post, so, so give it a read. Uh, but for now, that's the party line. See you next week.